Okay, welcome back. This is Dr. Jin Sung, and I'd like to welcome back you, to welcome you back to the Dr. Jin Sung Show. Uh, last week we talked about SIBO, constipation, diarrhea, and different methods uh, and different causes for IBS or irritable bowel syndrome. Today I'd like to talk to you about the functional medicine approach to a lot of these conditions. In the fun functional medicine world, we call this leaky gut syndrome or intestinal permeability. Basically, your gut lining is not intact or it's no longer in a tight junction and it lets things cross into the bloodstream that should not cross. So let's go into that a little bit. Leaky gut syndrome or intestinal permeability. What it is, is we take in stuff or foods or medicines or things that create inflammation in the, in the GI tract. So as it goes down into the GI tract, it causes some uh, breakage of what we call zonulin, zonulin and occluding bonds. Basically in, your, in the small intestine, you have these uh, cells, enterocytes, and they kind of move around and they absorb nutrients and so forth. But between these two cells, right, there's a bond that protects it and only lets in things that should cross into the bloodstream, like micronutrients, right, and amino acids. So it lets things in through that bond. And what happens is over time with antibiotic therapy, uh, PPIs or proton pump inhibitors, antacids, um, you know, medications or pain medications like Tylenol and uh, Advil and those types of things, it creates some damage in the intestinal lining. So these bonds that are between these sites, and enterocytes, it starts to break down. Once that breakdown occurs, the food that comes into the mouth and down into the stomach and so forth that need to be broken down properly and made into uh, 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 small components for usage in the cells, no longer break down completely, and then it gets into the bloodstream. So let's uh, take, for example, um, you take uh, a certain sugar, okay? Uh, you take a comp complex carbohydrate, and you take it in, it should be broken down to simple sugars and be utilized. But sometimes, uh, things like bread, right, will get in there and it, will, it won't break down completely and it will cross into, into the bloodstream causing uh, low-grade inflammation uh, problems in terms of uh, digestion and so forth, right? So when we look, look at leaky gut, we want to remove the offending agents. The, removing the offending agents can be things like food, right? Your typical culprits for food are your gluten, soy, dairy, nightshades, and lectins. Lectins are night, uh, basically nuts and seeds in those types of categories, right? So what we want to do in the beginning is remove those five foods, or food, five food categories out of your diet. And what that will help you do is you'll remove some of the inflammatory foods. So it gives your, your gut lining a chance to heal to a certain extent. A chance, it gives it a break, basically, okay? Um, the other offending agents can be things like chemicals, you know, medications, and lo prolonged antibiotic use, right? Food coloring, uh, excessive sugars, uh, stress. Stress plays a big factor into this because stress and cortisol can break down the gut lining, right? Birth control pills because estrogens can also break down the gut lining in excess, right? So we have to be able to remove some of the offending factors out of our diet or out of our lifestyle in order to feel better, right? Once we remove those things, we see if the patient starts to improve. And then we have to give the patient uh, nourishing foods, things that are good for your gut, things that will heal your gut. Um, one of the classic examples of good foods is fermented foods. Uh, things like sauerkraut, dill pickles, uh, kimchi, which is a Korean dish. Uh, so fermentation of these uh, foods create good bacteria in the food, and then you can kind of replenish your gut or re-inoculate your gut. 
Um, in our office, what we like to do is, what, first of all, we have to remove the offending factors, right? Get rid of those things that create damage to the GI tract. Afterwards, we like to say, okay, let's correct the diet. Let's, let's improve the dietary intake. So we actually put them on what we call an autoimmune protocol or AIP diet, right? And that is basically elimination of those five foods. Once we can do that, then we can give it some additional um, nourishing nutrients for the gut so it can heal. It can heal the gut bonds, basically the microvilli in there that go and try to absorb the nutrients, the bonds in between them what we're trying to do is restore that, right? So the, the zonulin and occluding bonds. So the, some of the products that we use in our office in order to do that is, there's a lot of different companies out there. There's companies called Designs for Health, Zymogen, uh, Numedica. Uh, this is a product by Apex, it's called Repair Bite. And again, it, there's a lot of different companies you can use what you like. Um, so let me just kind of look at it here for you. One of the number one ingredients for gut healing is glutamine or L-glutamine, okay? It's very important for that nourishing factor and, and improving uh, the bonds. Uh, another one is diglyceride licorice, aloe vera extract, uh, a bunch of enzymes, uh, slippery elm, MSM, uh, Spanish moss, right? Um, and these nutrients will start to help heal the GI tract. It will help seal those bonds up again. So large proteins that should not cross into the bloodstream, right, will be managed. So you have to be able to heal the gut. And so what we do is we use this product to help do that. But along the way, when we uh, eat the foods, we want to be able to digest the foods properly. So here's another product. It's a, it's a digestive enzyme. Um, along with uh, betaine hydrochloric acid, so HCL, with some digestive enzymes. So that starts the initial phases of breaking down your proteins, your fats, and your carbohydrates. So you take these, maybe one to two capsules with or right after your meal. It will help the digestive process of breaking down the foods initially. So this is important, and the repair bite, or you can use any company, like I said, will also help in terms of healing the gut, right? And then you want to be able to re-inoculate it with some good bacteria. So in our office, we like to use um, a company called Apex again. It's called Strengthia. And the, the main component of what I like in this is the Saccharomyces boulardii. And the Saccharomyces boulardii uh, is uh, more resistant to antibiotics that are in your system and it creates an environment where it can heal a little bit better. So it re-inoculates your system with some good bacteria. So if you look at it, we want to remove, take away the offending agents, and then we want to be able to uh, repair some of the gut lining, right? And then we want to re-inoculate it in, with good bacteria. But what I find with a lot of patients who have, let's say, leaky gut or prolonged GI symptoms, right, for many, many years, or they might even have a little bit of blood in their stool, right, um, it, we need to go searching for the offending agents. And sometimes it can be yeast overgrowth, it can be a parasite, uh, it can be H. pylori, uh, it can be even heavy metals. Uh, a lot of um, physicians don't talk about this, but heavy metals also plays a large part in terms of um, the overall gastrointestinal health. And the yeast overgrowth or a fungal overgrowth in our GI tract uh, sometimes can be due to heavy metal toxicity or, over, or, or excess of heavy metals in our system like mercury, okay? So those things can also be tested uh, and you need to figure out what the offending agents are. In the case of parasites or or GI bugs or fungus or, or bacterial overgrowth and those types of things, I use a, com uh, a product called GI Synergy, okay? And this is a combination of different um, herbal extracts that is, has antimicrobial properties, antifungal properties, antiparasitic properties, right? 
So some of the ingredients is woodworm extract, black walnut, um, uh, olive, uh, olive extracts, uh, garlic extracts, cat's claw, um, oregano. There's like 12 or 15 different nutrients or herbal extracts in here that will start to remove or eradicate the overgrowth of parasites and fungus and those types of things. So for most patients who come through the door, um, because the GI tract is so important for your overall health, we start there. We say, does this patient, basically on symptoms, have leaky gut syndrome or intestinal permeability? Do they have SIBO or small intestinal bowel overgrowth? Or is it an autoimmune disease like Crohn's disease or uh, inflammatory bowel disease, right? Or even celiac disease? What we're trying to do is figure out what is the underlying factors. And then we usually put them on a protocol for GI healing. So the GI healing will be initially these four things. Okay? We can use four products in the very beginning, in the first two weeks, and see if we can make a symptomatic change on the patient along with the dietary changes, obviously. Okay. Um, there are many other factors that play into gut healing, such as stress management, sleep, proper food intake, finding the proper triggers like food allergies, um, even like food coloring, uh, antibiotic residues in your foods. Uh, all those things play a, a factor in terms of the healing process. So you gotta be able to identify those things and remove it out of your diet. So it's very important to do those things, okay? Um, the other thing about GI tract and healing is that you need to have proper rest and stress management. Without it, it's very difficult. So if you're a go, go, go person, don't get enough sleep, I get three, four hours and I have to go out the next day, I'm trying to work out at the same time, I have three kids at home, um, and I'm, I don't know how I'm gonna make the, uh, uh, the rent at the end of the month. I mean, this is constant stress. If you bombard your system with a lot of external stress, and also physical stress, with, you know, when you're not sleeping, um, it creates havoc in the GI tract. You don't have the proper time or the sympathetic tone to digest. So if you're constantly under stress, but you're in a very sympathetic dominant area, meaning you fight or flight, right? You're always in that fight mode, you don't think about eating and digesting very well. So you have to be able to calm down so you can digest your foods. So stress management is a huge factor in this because uh, without the proper stress management, the GI tract probably won't heal uh, to its optimal level, okay? So stress management is a big thing in terms of digestive uh, problems. Um, I'd like to thank everyone last week who tuned in uh, we had close to 10,000 views uh, on our last video, so I'd like you to go back and watch that. And, I, and, and thank all the people who shared it with their family and friends, and, um, and we continue to grow with these videos. Next week, we're going to go in detail about autoimmune processes for the GI tract, right? Crohn's disease, celiac disease, uh, uh, inflammatory bowel disease, right? Or ulcerative colitis. So we're going to really talk about those more serious conditions uh, that you can see in the office. Those patients tend to usually see a gastroenterologist before coming to our office, um, but those are uh, patients that uh, can be managed pretty well with the functional medicine approach. Okay, so we'll see you next week, um, and what I'll do is I'll list the products uh, below this video, so if you want to go out and try it on your own, you can do that. Okay, so have a great week, and we'll see you back on the other side.